Hello, my name is Danica Barker and I am a secondary English teacher at Central Algon Collegiate Institute in St. Thomas. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the different ways that I use technology in the classroom. So um, I guess I'm kind of considered a techie teacher at my school because my students blog and tweet and I have a teacher website. So I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I've done in class before with my students. Um, so we'll start off here. So um, I do have a class website, and it's actually, it's a website that I use for all of my classes. So uh, it's kind of the jumping off point for everything for me right here, danicabarker.ca. And um, I have all of my course codes for the courses that I'm teaching up at the top. So um, each day, so if I click on this, uh, this provides information for parents and uh, students about the course. And it also gives us a link to our class blog. So each day I update uh, the day's lesson plan on the class blog. So if students are ever absent, they can check, it in, check in and see what they missed. Um, and it also helps to provide a little bit of transparency so the parents can see what we're doing in class. Um, I have links to uh, sites and things like that that we use on a regular basis. And uh, that's one of the sites that I'm gonna show you next. So I'm gonna take you to our book blog. So our book blog is actually made on Ning. It's not, this one is my grade 10 class one. It's not open to the general public. So what you're seeing here, you can see because I'm logged in. Um, if I were logged out, you would just sort of see uh, a request invitation link. With my senior students, we do blog publicly, um, but I, I like to sort of give students an opportunity to practice good, di good digital citizenship and talk to them about how they can um, uh, protect their privacy online and things like that. So um, even though this site is closed to the general public, you'll see that I still have students just blog with uh, first name only. Um, and they're often using uh, avatars for their profile pictures instead of their own picture. So on this site, um, my students will blog about books that they are reading on their own time. And uh, we do this once a week. Right now, for the, the first two blog posts, um, I have a lab booked out once a week so that we can all blog together. But once students become more comfortable with blogging, um, they'll be expected to do that on their own time. Now, um, all of the students that I have in my class have access to the internet at home. However, we do have, if they didn't have access to the internet at home, um, we do have computer labs that are available and um, I would have had a, an alternative assignment uh, made up for students who maybe had a more challenging time accessing the internet. But the whole idea here, and this is sort of my approach to technology in general, is that um, whatever tool you're using, you need to think about what the expectations are for the assignment. What is it that you want students to do? And then pick the best tool for the job. And in this case, having students blog on Ning, for me, was the best tool for the job. Why? Well, it allows students to comment. Now, this blog post that I'm showing you here is a brand new one, so students won't have commented yet. Um, but this one has two comments already. And one of the things that I'm trying to teach students to do is how they can extend the conversation by commenting on each other's text. It helps them to learn more about what their classmates are reading. And we also talked about the fact that when you're writing for an audience of your peers and you know they're going to write it and you're writing it for a specific purpose, um, you make uh, conscious decisions about how you're going to express yourself and you think more consciously about audience and purpose, um, which is a more authentic uh, writing task than just writing a journal assignment and handing it in to the teacher. One of the other projects that we do in addition to blogging is a project that I did with my grade 12 university level class when we were studying Hamlet and that was uh, some role playing basically. I had the students take on uh, different characters from the play Hamlet and um, they tweeted what their thoughts were about uh, what was going on in the play. So the idea here was to get them thinking critically about what was going on behind the scenes. Um, and so as we were reading through the play at the end of specific chunks, um, we had uh, students get together and think about how their characters would react to um, certain events that were happening. So 
Um, they had a lot of fun with this assignment, and some of them, uh, sometimes things were kind of silly, but that was okay because they were still really thinking about how, uh, how, the, how the different events in the play would affect their characters behind the scenes. So um, this was really important because they had to understand the text. Um, in order to understand how their characters would interact with each other. And so what we would do is we would read a scene, um, we would get together in groups, and they would discuss the kinds of things that their characters would then text. And um, after they did that, um, they uh, what we would do is we would then reflect on the kinds of things that they tweeted. So if we didn't think that it was... Um, uh, appropriate or if we didn't think that it fit the text, we actually use that as a discussion point. So we talked about, you know, how much does this match what we know about the character and, and that sort of thing. Um, so it was really good for uh, critical thinking. And I guess one of the other big things is uh, people often talking about using cell phones in the classroom. And um, I use cell phones in the classroom in a number of different ways, but I guess the thing is that I try not to make them a big deal. Um, it's just they're another tool that we can use to access information and um, you know collaborate. So uh, one of the things I use cell phones for is as homework reminders. I've tried a number of different things in the past, but um, almost all of my students have cell phones. Those who don't use email for sure. And so I use Remind 101, which is a service that allows me to uh, send a, basically a one-way message to all of my students at once. So um, just today I, I sent them a reminder and I scheduled it in advance. So I told them in class, all right, I'm putting in a reminder about your uh, paragraphs, which are due for tomorrow. And uh, I scheduled it for six o'clock, which is when they said would be the best time for them to get it and remember that they have homework. And I hit send. Um, and for my students who choose not to subscribe to this by cell phone, they can do it through email. But I mean, we also have, I had a student today who is uh, looking up a, a fairy tale for um, examining uh, archetypes in literature. And he looked that up today on his phone. Um, I had students, you know, they use, they use their phones to, as, a, as a dictionary to look up words. Um, and do they use it in, in off-task ways? Yep, sometimes. Um, in the same way that they use pens and pencils in off-task ways sometimes. So um, for me, the approach to kind of cell phones in the classroom is to use it as a tool and uh, treat the behavior as something different. So I guess that's about it. Um, it's, it's sometimes hard to think of the different ways that we're using technology in the classroom, especially when some of them just start to become invisible. It's just stuff that we do every day. It's part of the norm. Um, but yeah, so I hope that uh, this was helpful.